Tonight, a major breakthrough for Elon Musk's brain science startup, Neuralink, announcing the company has successfully implanted a brain chip in a human for the first time, less than a year after the FDA gave the green light for a clinical study. Imagine the joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. Neuralink says the implant is intended to record and transmit brain signals wirelessly to an app that decodes movement intention. In other words, controlling a phone or computer with someone's thoughts. Thus, the product's name, telepathy. Musk posting on his social media platform X, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than a speed typist or auctioneer. That's the goal. Elaborating on Neuralink's mission in 2019. This, um, I think, has a very good purpose. Uh, which is to cure important diseases um, and ultimately to help secure humanity's uh, future as a civilization. Musk said the patient received the implant Sunday and was recovering well. He described the initial data from the device as promising and noted initial users will be those who have lost the use of their limbs. Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. In previous we tests on animals, a monkey with a Neuralink's brain Just implant play. able to play Pong on a computer, according to the company. Um, the device also detecting brain activity in a pig. What does this technology have the potential to do? We're just at the beginning of this area of, of medical device development. Neuralink is one of a small handful of companies and researchers testing brain chips in humans. Nathan is moving this hand with his brain. Watch as this 30-year-old, injured in a car crash, fist bumps President Obama with a robotic arm powered by his thoughts in 2016. And these patients are controlling their computers with their minds to message back and forth, thanks to Synchron's implanted device. The company says it's like brain Bluetooth. And while emerging neurotechnology offers exciting possibilities, social media exploding with sci-fi references. Never before has a biomechanical fusion been asked to do so much. The provocative new frontier raising questions about bioethics and regulation. We believe FDA and other regulatory agencies need to do a much better job of not only regulating this, but sharing this information with the public because all of these clinical trials come with real risks to the patients involved. In a statement to NBC News, the FDA says it has a scientifically rigorous process to evaluate the safety and effectiveness of medical devices, adding that it will continue to monitor the safety of those enrolled in the study for Neuralink's implant device through required regular reports. Musk did not go into detail about Sunday's procedure, but Neuralink has told prospective participants that it will use a machine to implant the device in their brain, a source of concern for Dr. Ryan Merkley. There are some companies that have non-invasive devices. They are often worn on the skull. Neuralink's device is the most invasive brain-computer interface that we know of because it requires cutting a dime-sized hole in the skull and implanting a device with hundreds or potentially even thousands of little threads into the brain. And Neuralink has not responded to our request for more detail on the recent procedure. The company has said its clinical study will take around six years, and that's just one of a series of steps before commercialization. Tom. All right, Emily, we appreciate that. For more on this, we're joined now by Dr. Paul Nuyujukian, an assistant professor of bioengineering and neurosurgery at Stanford University. He's also the director of Stanford's Brain Interfacing Laboratory and an expert in brain machine interfaces. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Top Story. From a neuroscientist's perspective, can you explain how exactly Neuralink's new technology works and why this is a game changer potentially? Yeah, of course. Um, pleasure to be here. Uh, this is a medical device implanted in the head that is designed to help people who can't move their arms or legs to operate something like a phone. Uh, it does this by measuring movement commands from the brain and translating those measurements into keyboard and mouse commands, similar to how you input text into a phone. Uh, this is all the science has shown. Uh, so in case you were worried, right, it, it can't read your thoughts. Um, this is the commercial translation of decades of scientific research in animals and in human studies, some of which happened right here at Stanford that I helped lead to make this technology possible. So right now, this is essentially trying to communicate with devices. Is the, is the long play to essentially get things like people who are paralyzed able to walk again? Is that possible? Yeah, well, one of the potential applications is to help control, for example, robotic arms or robotic limbs. There's even been some scientific studies in university settings that use these devices 
to stimulate arms and legs, muscles in the arms and legs that are paralyzed um, to help move again. So again, very early stages, we're working on it, um, but the hope is that we'll get there. Are there downsides to this device? I mean, what happens if it malfunctions? Um, can, can it damage the brain? So this particular device is really only designed to read from the brain. Um, you know, all types of medical devices, especially ones that are implanted in the brain, the, the so-called class one medical device, uh, class three medical devices, um, do carry risks, right? The, the device could have some type of problem, and that's exactly what this study is designed to evaluate. The, the, the goal of the study that's currently been approved is a safety study, looking at exactly how safe these types of devices are, and the specific device in particular, for potential evaluation uh, as a medical device. The, the people, or the human, I should say, that, that was tested with this device, the Neuralink device, how is this person sort of located, and, and what do they hope happens? Do, do, do you have any information on that? I don't actually have any information that isn't public, and so we know nothing about the specifics of the individual that, that was announced to have been implanted. Uh, but just speaking generally, because I have done clinical studies of this type before, um, this, is, this is a very standard uh, clinical trial, right? There is a rigorous process by which you ask the FDA for permission, you share with them what the inclusion criteria is. So typically these types of studies involve people with severe paralysis, meaning they, they can't move their arms, they can't move is usually the result of either some type of neurodegenerative disease that slowly erodes their ability to move or some type of injury like a spinal cord injury that has suddenly severed their ability to control the rest of their body. And those are usually the types of what are called inclusion criteria, sort of the type of the, the person with the, a certain types of you know, uh, physical disability that's required before you can be considered for uh, a study like this. Doctor, last like question this. here, because we're running out of time. What do you think the timeline is going from this sort of test case with you know a few humans on this planet to, to having this sort of hit the public? Well, it, this, it's this kind of thing takes a very long time. And when you say hit the public, I want to be very clear. This is a medical device. It will only really ever be a medical yeah, device. Yeah, hit, hit in, the public, in, people that need it medically in the public, just on, on a widespread yeah. scale. You're, you're, look, you're looking. You're looking at you know a, a five, ten, fifteen year timeline. These are these are long studies, right? Comparable devices like this uh, that have been on the market for slightly different purposes have taken twenty years. So this is the beginning of a long process that will hopefully continue to 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 show very promising yeah. and encouraging results. Hopefully, a step in the right direction. Dr. Paul Nuyujikian, thank you so much for joining Top Story tonight. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.